All right, so this is the second video of my scripting series. And in this one, we're going to be going over variables and data types. So what we're going to be doing is going, first of all, what are variables? What are they used for and how we write them? And then secondly, we're going to be going over data types. So what are they? How do we use them? What are they useful for? And when do you use them? So the first thing we're going to go over is variables. Now I've got three different variables here, all with different data types, but we're going to ignore the data types for now. First of all, we're going to have a look at variables. So what variables are basically just something that holds a piece of data. So we could look at them like cardboard boxes in a sense. You, you put stuff in and then you put a label on it so you know what it is once you've closed it up. So you can hold all kinds of data in variables. We're going to cover that later. But to make a variable, first of all, you've got to use the local keyword. So just type in local there. And then you want to give the variable a name. This is what you're going to refer to it as throughout the rest of the script. So I could just call mine, um, I don't know, player name. And then I'm going to set that equal to the value I want. So for now, I'm not going to tell you what these quotes mean or anything. But I'm just going to give my name squiddings here. So this is how you define a full variable. First of all, you want to put local. It's just, just something you say to tell the uh, tell the program you're making a variable. And then the name that you want your variable to be uh, referred to as, and then the data that you are setting to be stored inside this variable. Now, to show you that this actually does in fact work, I'm not sure we've covered this yet, but I'm just going to write a print statement to print it down here to the output. And I'm going to put in this variable name. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it in there. And you will see that if I run this game here, it has printed out squiddings, which is what I put in this variable here. Nice. Right. But now you've got like the basic idea of how to make variables. We're going to go over the, uh, well, we're going to go over three different data types today. We are going to be going over integers, strings, and booleans. So these are all the... So these are the most basic data types you're going to come across. And integers are basically numbers, so you could have it as 2.1, 3.4, 5, 7, 9. And then strings are a set of characters, just like a string of characters, but you can also put numbers in them, etc. So to make strings, you use these double quotes here, or you can use single quotes like that. And then you just put whatever you like in there, so I could type that, or I could type, and uh, name is strings. And then booleans are true or false values. So whether something is on or off, it's binary basically, uh, which we use to store things like whether the player is in the spawn area or not in the spawn area, for example. So first of all, we're going to have a go with integers. So integers are just numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and say local number one equals 2.1. Again, making variables like we, uh, like we did a bit ago and then I'm going to make one called number two and I'm going to set that to a whole number so let's say five so this here we have set two variables each with different numbers and obviously different variable names uh, and what I'm going to do is then just show you how variables can interact I'm going to make a different variable I'm going to call this results right and what we're going to do is we're going to add this number one variable to this number two variable so to get this, we could do 2.1 plus 5. But in some cases, you don't know what is stored inside these variables. If you're running it in an actual game with like complex code, you're not always going to know exactly what values are held in these uh, variables. So to calculate this result without putting in the values manually, we're going to make a variable again. I'm just going to call it result 2. And we're going to, again, add the exact same numbers. But there you go. The game's already doing it for me. I'm going to press tab for you there. What we're doing is adding the number one variable to the number two variable. Now, this isn't adding the actual words number one and number two together. What this is doing is fetching the values that are held inside of these uh, variables and adding them together. So this is the exact same thing here. Both of these are doing exactly the same thing. I'll show you that by printing results and results two next to each other. So if I run this game, there you go. It's printing out 7.1 twice. So you can change these values, obviously, to whatever you like. Um, I could change this one to like 79 or something, and it'll add up and show 84. Uh, 84 is the second one there, obviously, because I'm still printing both out. But yeah, you can do this with as many numbers as you like. I could have like 
hundreds of numbers all added up. It wouldn't be very efficient, like, but it worked. Right, so that is integers. Well, that's, I don't know. Oh, right, sorry. Just to point out, I've called it integers, but it's not all integers. Integers are whole numbers. You can have floats as well. But in Roblox, they're all covered under the same sort of like uh, umbrella term sort of thing. You've not got integers and floats separate. Right, so now we're going into strings. So strings, like I said earlier, is just a collection of characters, numbers, symbols, whatever, all stored in either a single quote or a double quote. So I'm going to make a variable. I'm going to call it uh, my string, just for example. I'm going to set that equal to this is my string. My name is strings. And we are going to print this out. Let's print it out. Print my string. I'm going to run that, and there you go. That is a string that's pretty much as simple as it gets, or as complicated as it gets even. Um, yeah, those are strings. You can add two strings together if you so wish, just like you can do with numbers, but a little bit different. Uh, so I'll do my second string, shall we say, is this is my second string. And then I'm going to add a comma to print something else out as well as that. And I'm going to put in my second string variable again. And I'm going to run that. This is my string. My name is Squiddings. This is my second string. So it's printing out both of them next to each other. So again, what this is doing here, what this print statement is doing, is pulling uh, this string here from this variable name. It's collecting the data. And it's doing the same for this second string. And it's printing it out to the screen. And you can do this in any, any kind of way you like. You could put it on a text label on the screen, which is just a little box with text in that you actually see on your screen or you could send it in chat, you could do whatever. So strings are just used to store text data, basically. Right, now the final data type we're doing today is booleans. So booleans are true or false values, often on uh, ones and zero, basically like binary. So you could use this to store, let's say, uh, let's say if the play is alive, so it is alive equal false. Um, and then you can use this for what we're gonna do later on which would be a conditional statement. So if the player is alive, then give them 100 points. Like if they've survived a certain amount of time in in the game. Um, there's not really much you can do with Booleans in the sense of manipulating them like you can with strings and numbers. Uh, like you can't add Booleans together. You can't minus them from each other. All you can really do is just change the uh, values of them. So I could just change it to is alive, it's true. And then just to show you that it does in fact change, I'll add a print beforehand and print after show you that at this point in the code is alive is false but after i've changed it to true is alive will show to be true so if i run that now it will say on line 20 of the script is alive is equal to false but on line 22 it is equal to true right so now we're going to go over how you actually put these data types together because you can't add integers to strings you can't add booleans to strings as we've just been over so how are we going to do this? Well, I'm just going to write a little print statement, and I want to print out all of this information in one string. So I'm just quickly going to add my information, colon, and we want my name, followed by my age, followed by whether I'm recording or not. So how we're going to do this is we are going to, first of all, add two dots, which is how you add things, add strings to each other in print statements. Uh, and we're first of all going to add my name, because that's already a string. You don't need to do anything to that. Now we need to add my age, and you can't add a number value to a string value straight away. It just won't work. So you're going to have to convert this number value to be a string value. How we're going to do that is a built-in function called toString and then a pair of brackets. Now what this does is it just takes data that you give it and converts it into a string data type, so it can be used with other strings. So in here we're going to just give it the uh, age uh, variable, and then I'm just going to another two dots to add now my whether I'm recording or not, and do another two string and put in recording. So uh, I'm just going to add some spaces here just to make it a little bit easier to read. So what I'm doing here is I'm giving it uh, a string that I'm putting, that I'm writing in the print statement. So I'm saying my information is, and then add in my name, which is this value, followed by a string version of my age, which is this value, followed by a string version of whether I'm recording or not, which is this value. So now this should work. If I run the game, you'll see that in this output window here, it's printing out my information is my name, 
followed by my age, followed by whether I'm recording or not. Now, obviously, you could format this however you like. You could say, you could literally just change it to um, if I am recording and then add a two string and recording. You don't have to do it like I've done it, but there you go. If I'm recording, true. You can use this to manipulate however you like, print out whatever you whatever you please. And just on another side note, you always need to make sure whether, when you're referencing variables that you've got the exact same name. You've got to have the same capitalization and the exact same spelling or you'll run into an error that it won't be able to find the data because it won't be able to find the variable. And that is called a name error. Right, anyway, that has covered variables and data types. Uh, next video, we will be covering functions and events. So just keep an eye out for that and that'll be up soon. Like, subscribe and I'll see you next time.